So, so last time I talked about this dar vote, local dar vote. If you have a close to form on a drive stack and local dar vote theorem, it states that um, the close to form can have a locally. So close to form was something like this. It could go to infinity like that, and it had some non-degeneracy condition, and we get a precise definition of it. Uh, but, uh, but we also showed that you can have a drive stack, and you can cover it with affine, affine patches, affine drive stacks, a spectrum of CDGAs, and in those local affine patches, well, you need to find the affine patch, you need to cook up the ring, and in some local neighborhood, you can actually always write this thing homotopical to some description like this. And this was writing the symplectic 2 form, or the closed P form actually, closed P form as a in local dark form. So, so we wrote that, and then we said that, in fact, there is a potential function that we can associate to this one, and often this potential function is a a function, so this potential function, we call it something like this, and we said often this thing sits inside some graded piece of the ring. So it is a potential function, this derivative does give you the form, but it's the Hamiltonian that communicates with the two form, but then it could be sitting in this weighted piece of the CDG. And, you know, we just said that if if you're uh, if you have a shifted symplectic K form, the potential will be sitting in uh, K plus one piece, and so we showed that if we have a minus um, um, basically minus one shifted symplectic structure on our stack, then the potential function does in fact live in live in a dot of zero because K plus one is zero, and then. We actually said that then locally that the stack with the minus one should be symplectic structure locally can be realized as this critical locus of a regular function. Because in fact the reduced underlying locus of that stack is exactly the spectrum of the A0 part and this sits in A0. Okay, so that is those are the things that we talked about. Now uh, let, let us talk about further thing. Today I wanted to talk about shifted symplectic structures on moduli space of coherent sheets on, on a variety. This was original plan. But then for that, I realized I need to tell you a little bit more. So today let us do something else which is also very interesting. So existence, existence uh, of shifted symplectic structures symplectic structures and uh, Lagrangian Lagrangian structures. Okay, so eventually today, hopefully, we can learn what is a Lagrangian mean in a drug stack. Okay, so let us first talk about mapping the stacks. This is not something that we haven't seen before. We have been using it one way or another. So let M be a compact C infinity manifold of a compact C infinity manifold of dimension little m. And N be then be a C infinity manifold um, also. And we had this thing before, so mapping the space between M and N, C infinity mapping the space, this one, um, the Sogache or something, I don't know how to write this, Sogache manifold, manifold of the infinity maps, okay, C 
can do the next from M to N. Okay. Then naturally we have a map from N times the mapping is based from N to N. One of them is the evaluation map to N, the other one is the projection on to N. Okay, um, then this induces this diagram induces a, uh, a map from PF form on N there's the QF form on N to omega P plus Q minus M over the space of maps, infinity maps from N to N which sends a uh, sends uh, alpha and beta because you have these two cohomology classes forms in the Arbo cohomology of N and N alpha and beta it sends it to integration of pullback of alpha and let's say pullback of alpha wedge with evaluation upper star of beta integrated with the Find for you something like this, and this actually gives you. This is something that we just defined. This thing we just defined as the hat product of alpha and beta. Okay. Here, this here, the symbol denotes. The integration, integration along uh, the fiber. Okay, so integrating this along the fiber, and so now um, if n and omega is symplectic then okay so let us assume that now n is a symplectic manifold which has a symplectic form then and eta is a volume Form from this manifold n. Sorry, for uh, n, for n. Then we can define. Uh, then we can define the hat product of this via this definition. It is going to be something in the second. Uh, which product of this mapping space and n. This defines a symplectic form on uh, mapping C infinity mapping space. So you have this thing. Now, we would like to extend this definition to the version of derived these times. So we need to extend this with defining two new notions. One of them is integration along the fibers. This notion of integration, I need to define what it is. That will be the orientation. And so, so let's write it down. So we need to, now we need to, to extend, you know, now to extend this definition. So 
definition or construction for drive the stacks okay we need to introduce we need to introduce two new notions two new notions one of them is a replacement for replacement for Poincaré duality you know your intersecting cycles so intersection means dualizing so one of them is the Poincaré duality how, how do you dualize what do you dualize and the other one is um, notion of um, notion of uh, something called O orientation o orientation which allows for a um, for a um, quasi coherent quasi coherent modification of integration. So quasi coherent quasi coherent um, modification modification of integration along And soon you will see this is actually useful because it defines this notion of Lagrangian structures and so on. We would like to define these Lagrangians. Just have in mind that I'm going to later fix some shifted symplectic derived stack as for n. And I'm going to have something like n, which sits inside n as a Lagrangian. And then I'm going to ask myself, what is, this, what is the symplectic structure on M? And that, in fact, gives the Lagrangian a definition. Okay, so this is where we are going but later. So, okay, so definition. Definition. A drive the stack. Now we completely know what this means. Drive the stack X over a... Um, derived affine scheme derived affine scheme spec of a dot pg scheme is what is called strictly strictly O compact strictly O compact over underlying a dot if it satisfies if it satisfies the following conditions one is that all x is a compact object in this category of quasi coherent sheaves on X, it comes from its finite degenerate group. Object two, that there is a for any two that for any perfect perfect complex E dot on this drive the stack X, okay. The DG module, DG module, R hom OX E. Okay. So this is a module over OX algebra, then it's a DG module. 
because all X algebra itself carries a differential equation structure. This DG module is, you know, is perfect. It means that it has no non-vanishing cohomologies beyond some degrees and below some degrees. Beyond and below. So it's a perfect object. Concentrate it in some amplitude. Okay, so this is now uh, drive the stack. Drive the stack X is uh, over over some field. Over some field K is O compact. O compact if for any uh, affine. affine a scheme that for any actually you know two x's in here is not really good so I recall this thing y last time so let's call it y so if it is, it is all compact if for any y for any y equal to a spec of some a dot okay X time Y is strictly okay. okay, so this is some definition. What is the use of this definition, Roman? The main property, the main property of uh, O compact uh, drag the stacks is that mm, is the is the existence existence or any derived the stack F is the existence for any derived the stack F of a morphism, the existence of a morphism of graded com graded complexes or graded mixed complexes, so bigraded, so to speak. Complexes over over the underlying field the following way. So you can get a morphism like this from Durham complex or Durham algebra of f times x. Okay, to Durham complex of f times R hump O X O X so this is this was for us summing over all possible lambda O of the F times X shifted by P this was summing over all possible um, O of F shifted by Q. And this is what we call, we can, we can give this a name. Endomorphism algebra complex of X. have some f times x. So if x is O compact, then there is always this morphism of graded mixed complexes. So the hum algebra of f times
subjects can be captured by, I mean, this is really actually non-trivial, right? It's like, if you like, uh, can you guess where you have seen this kind of thing? Think about differential forms as, as uh, cohomology graphs. Have you seen this kind of thing somewhere? So some cohomology splits. Where does cohomology split over a product? So think about cooling decomposition. It's quite like similar. But this is not a precise morphism, right? No, not yet. Okay. Later will be. So <coughs> which is which is functorial. So far, you just have a morphism. Okay. I mean, okay. So, now, to answer your question, since X is all compact, uh, R hum all X or X is perfect by definition over. So all compactness means that for any complex that I pick, that I put in here, R hom O E is actually perfect, including O itself. And uh, and uh, infinity and the morphism functor and the morphism functor functor E to E tensor with tensor over K with R hum OX OX. This guy, can you split? Can you split infinity limits? Okay. Then we can see that. Then we can see that. We can see that mm, we get a we get a, a non-trivial transformation. Transformation. From their home complex of something times x, which is a transformation from the opposite category of derived stacks over this field to the degraded modules over the field. Okay. And this is this is shown by PT. Because it's a it's a map, it's a functor, it's a construction which is functorial in your stacks. You start from a drive the stack and you get some DG graded DG module over that algebra, over the same algebra. So both F and X are drive the stacks over the same field. So this can be a functor that sends you from there to there. Okay. And here I'm, I'm hiding many details, but it's not important. It is it's for, for you are trying to browse their code. Okay. So now, here is the catch. Now we can apply, we can apply this uh, infinity functor, negative cyclic weighted complex, I called it NCW or NCK, I don't remember, to the morphism to dr f times x goes to dr of f times c of x of x and the morphism algebra. 
of x. So remember that for any complex, we can define the negative cyclic, negative uh, weighted cyclic complex of that complex. And if we take the cohomologies, we we are taking cohomologies of this negative cyclic complex, and those are the negative cyclic cohomology classes. And those, it is the negative cyclic complex for the Durham algebra that actually gives you the closed forms. Our closed forms, P forms, over a drive the stack were elements in here. Remember? And this negative cyclic complex is the was defined as the product over all i bigger than zero and infinitely many, and that's why our closed forms were infinite tuples. So just to remind you of the last session. So the point is that the functor that you can that you know that it spits out for a given complex, the negative cyclic complex associated to that is, is is a functor. And so you can apply this functor to morphism. And what do you get? If you do that, okay. So if you apply to this, then you obtain. And obtain some map is called KFX from negative weighted cyclic complex of F times X. This by definition is the negative weighted cyclic complex of Durham algebra of F times X. This is the same thing. We discussed it last time. Two negative cyclic complex of the Durham algebra of F times this endomorphism algebra of all. Okay. And we can show that this is a is an equivalent equivalence of a graded complexes equivalence of graded complexes and for this we we this is implied by, by the fact that that x is all compact. So now this is closer to what you were asking, whether this is a quasi-isomorphism or not. It's not a quasi-isomorphism in the level of Durham algebras, but it will be an equivalence of complexes in the level of negative cyclic complexes. So much, much, much closer to the Kuhnert decomposition. Um, and in fact, there are there is a and there exists a diagram. Okay, so let me tell you what's the diagram. This thing naturally via this map K of F X maps to this times a this endomorphism complex, and well, you know, remember that last time we, did, we 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 said that from the negative cyclic complex of E dot, there is a map from that projection map onto E dot itself. So this itself maps to this by definition is this guy. So this is just the Durham of F times X, and the, you know this is the underlying just the thing that we had before. X is O compact, then this thing maps to this times X of X. Oh, hmm. maybe up there. And this, uh, this actually, this is also, so to 
this kind of this. So this is only true if x is for full compact. And the uh, vertical morphisms are projections. Okay, so Now, now this is enough for us to define this notion of integration. We are trying to define a notion of integration along a fiber. And we would like to define this notion of integration as a map from basically negative cyclic, negative cyclic algebra of m times some mapping the space from m to n to algebra of underlying n, m or n. Okay? So we are going to use this thing. So now, now, assume that uh, we have a map. We can assume that for some integer v, some integer v, we have a map. We have a map from, let's call this map something, eta, from this complex c dot of x o x to k in the category of this complex, in the derived category, k shifted by d. This is just R hum. This by this is again. This is just R hum for x x. Okay. Let's say you have something. Then I will need to show you some example where, for a derived stack, I can have some morphism like that. In fact, I will show you. But let's for now assume that we have some map, like this. Okay in the derived category of k module. Okay, good. So then, then for any derived stack, then for any derived stack, let's say f, we have a natural morphism, natural Morphism. What is it? From the negative cyclic complex of f times x to uh, this is kf of x. Negative cyclic complex of f times this thing r home, or I just called it something like this thing, and then all the way to so. Yeah, so this is now identity tensor with this map theta to negative cyclic complex of F shifted by D. Okay, if you have a map from R hum OX OX, um, Yes, and there is this thing, I think, actually, that I think that you might, okay, so the thing is that because x is all compact, I think you can show that this thing becomes this thing. You don't need to put parentheses on both sides. That thing, a negative cyclic complex, has just some infinite product. So you can actually show that there is a quasi isomorphism between that product and negative cyclic complex of F times the R hum, finite type R hum algebra of X, isomorphism algebra. Okay. Yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, 
And so if that is the case, then if your x comes with a morphism like this, some kind of, I will show you so an example. Then you just apply this functor, ncw, to this morphism here and compose with this map eta. And this map eta is like, for your x, this map eta is kind of like in integration. But it's shifted. So, okay, so then, fine, we can have something like this. And uh, this morphism is called this composite morphism is called integration morphism. Integration morphism in the homotopy category in the homotopy category homotopy category of uh, PG uh, graded modules over K integration morphism in this category along in in the along this map eta. This is this person. Mm -hmm. Extension of the integration. Yeah. Um, sorry, so uh, I just want to make sure uh, for a, a smooth protective uh, variety uh, is uh, negative cyclic homology the same as algebraic theorem? That's right. Yeah, but, but then in this case, uh, how, how can the top arrow, top horizontal arrow be a fixed isomorphism? Uh, on the uh, left hand side is, uh, uh, for example, if we consider over C, th th this Remember is that in that case, endomorphism algebra of X wouldn't have many terms. We have only. Sorry? And the endomorphism <laughs> algebra of X wouldn't have higher commodity. Go ahead, yeah. You have some. Okay, so ask your question, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so uh, the left hand side is uh, just a singular co uh, a cohomology of f cross x, right? If, if, the, if they are both uh, per a smooth projective mm -hmm. over C. Okay. And the uh, uh, first term on the right hand side is the singular cohomology of f, but, but uh, the uh, the second term on the right hand side is not the singular cohomology of x. It is just, uh, it's just uh, uh, the bottom of the Hodge diagram. The left hand side is also Durham cohomology of x times x. Why are you saying the left hand side is singular cohomology? The left hand side also. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but the, is, the, yeah. the Durham is equal to singular cohomology over, yeah. over C. But le left is. Uh, the the round uh, right of uh, the first term on the right is the round, but the second term on the right is not the round. Okay. Mm. The round of f cross x should be the round of f. Uh, times the of x. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's not the of x. Let me see. <coughs> yeah. So, but you, uh, yeah, it's my question. <coughs> so you're saying that. 
you are saying that writing it this way is still not correct. So I should put like this. This I don't see how you can immediate yourself. This way it could be more correct. But this one, this one maps to that one, the product, right? Why from the Durham, Durham algebra you can get a map to uh, second part, right? From this, you can map to that. Mm. <coughs> yeah, so basically this thing, uh, Durham of, I'm saying this thing, Basically, the hum of f times this guy, this maps to this thing, which is just a singular comma or a negative simple comma algebra f times this. And so, okay. Yeah, probably that's right. I should still put the parentheses in here. You're right. And then I should say something about this one. So this is not just this map. This is this com composition with this projection map. Yeah, I think. So for, for projective uh, manif uh, ma manifold x, is say x just constant? No. 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 Oh. Okay. If you take uh, some hypersurface inside some projective space, then you can calculate it, right? You can just calculate it, calculate the form of the endomorphism of the form. Oh. Right. You can have a locally free resolution oh. and calculate it. <laughs> and the locally free resolution has more than one term. <laughs> So depending on the code dimension. Okay, yeah, thank you, actually, that would be clear. Yeah, so this is the projection onto this here. But I will check one more time, maybe there is some subtlety here. Yeah. Okay, but you're right. This cannot be quasi-isomorphic because the second part is, doesn't see the Durham structure like this. I agree. Okay. Um, so this morphism is called inter-integration morphism, and okay, so then definition, uh, let f and x, okay, we drive the stacks. Drive the stacks with X O compact. Okay. And let and let eta from and the morphism algebra of X to KG be uh, be a morphism in a uh, draft category of K modules. Uh, for some D, okay. all right, then the integration, integration map along eta is the morphism, is the morphism, is the morphism integration of eta from negative simply complex of f times x to all the way to negative simply complex of f times c dot x over x then composed with with, with this map. This is the notion of integration along the model. So this is our definition. So now, 
we will see how we use this. Okay. So, in the level of in the level of your hum complexes, complexes, we also have a similar morphism. We have a similar similar map. And similar to this, really. So again, from here, it takes you from this guy to your home complex of that. Like that. And then all the way to the home complex of that shifted by D. So this is integration along x the I mean, on integration along map from here to x this is this not a notion of integration along fiber for drive stuff okay and this and the following square and the following square commutes so you have this guy, which goes to this guy via integration, and you have this. Oh, oh, yeah, this guy, which goes to this guy, and these are again uh, projections. Projections from negative shifted complex to the Durham complex. <laughs> All right. So not only that, you can have also. So remember that when I was defining forms, I will pull back a volume form and I will pull back a symplectic form, and then this idea of creating a form on the on N was composed of somehow looking at hat product of two things, two classes, two differential forms, and then integrating along the fiber along one of the maps. So we, we have so far defined this integration along the map. And then the idea of hatting is actually just a tensor product. So, so let me just say that too. So now let uh, x be all compact of compact, the complex, the complex C dot of X O X, which is the R home O X comma O X, this complex has some PG structure. So okay, this complex has a mm, possesses a natural PG mm, or CDGA structure over K okay, equipped with equipped with a notion of cup product. So the notion of cup product is basically you can take something in here, transfer it over k, again with this one, and land in here. Okay. In particular, any from here to any shifted morphism, maybe shifted by minus t, 
provides a morphism provides a morphism uh, eta from c dot x o x to oops, sorry so this this is let's call this thing eta okay let's call this or or you know orientation if you like this is your orientation so if you have some morphism like that then you have a morphism copying with eta something copying something with eta which is map from here to this is the copying map from c dot of x o x and then you compose with this integration uh, along the map eta so you land in Well, we are just mimicking the, the very construction from the beginning. I pull back the symplectic form from M, and I pull back the volume form from N, and then I integrate it along the projection map from M times oh, M times mapping the space to uh, M. Okay, and so we pull back two things, and this is that cup bottom, and then we are. Co you know, collapsing it along this integration along Okay, so this is Okay, so now the noting moreover moreover denoting denoting uh, for instance, a C dot x o x has r harm dot dual has r harm from C dot o x o x to underlying field k. Uh, we can uh, the above morphism the above. Morphism defines naturally an adjunction an adjunction which is copying something and then with with the eta is going to give you a map from C dot X O X to C dot X O X dual shifted by minus t. Okay. I'm having the map from here times this, this times that to here. And then in the, this is an r -hum in the quasi-coherent drive category of this x. And so this has a dual. I put the dual tensor with that. That's your adjunction. Okay. More generally, for any perfect complex, P dot, to get a pairing, to get a Pairing C dot X E um, times, uh, do I need to? I can write it like this. We get the pairing copying with eta from C dot X E dot to C dot X E dot to all shifted by minus D. This was our um, x e dot. Oh, sorry, our um, o x e dot. Okay, so we have that.
All right. So now I define for you the notion of orientation. Definition. Definition. Let X be, a, be an O compact. O compact derive the stack. Derive the stack and D be some integer. Okay. An orientation. Orientation of degree D on X consists of consists of a morphism morphism of complexes morphism of complexes. K from Cx OX to K minus D. Such that for any A dot uh, CDGA over K and any perfect complex. Perfect complex E dot on X times the spec of A dot, the morphism Ah, you know what actually? What is it? Well, give me a second. Why don't you say oh X of course, right? What is K? Orientation on X. The morphism in Morphism this times the orientation of X, the volume form or the orientation, the color orientation is like the volume form. This is this takes you from here to here and let's turn the spec of A dot E and dot dual shifted by minus d is a quasi-isomorphism isomorphism of complexes Quasimorphism of A dot DG modules complexes with that DG modules should respect the DG string. Okay, so that's the definition. Now there is this theorem now. Theorem. Let F be a derived Arkham stack. Derived Arkham stack equipped with equipped with M shifted symplectic structure so you have this closed two form of degree M and uses a quasi isomorphism between the cotangent complex of the Artemis stack F and the tangent complex shifted by M so if you have that okay oh no I said it wrong, right? 
When you say shifted and shifted symplectic structure, it means that you have this closed two form, and it's underlying two form in the degree zero that induces a quasi isomorphism between tangent and cotangent complexes with the shift. So your two form is omega goes from omega zero all the way. Omega zero induces a quasi isomorphism. Okay. Yeah, okay. These are delicate, right? So you have this thing. And shift is simply two forms of omega in the space of closed two forms on F with degree N. That's the space of two forms of degree N. Let X be an O compact, O compact derived stack equipped with. Equipped with an or an orientation. And okay. And O orientation. So they have defined. Okay, let's say that is the case, which is a map from here to k minus e. So this is an O orientation of degree e. Of degree d. Assume that, assume that the derived Derive the mapping stack. Now I'm actually deriving the example I just put from the, uh, at the beginning of the session. The derived mapping stack R map from X to this stack F that this thing is a uh, itself is itself um, an artin stack a stack locally of finite present presentation artin stack locally of finite presentation Over K okay then the mapping is that XF carries a canonical <laughs> canonical N minus D shifted symplectic structure. N minus D shifted symplectic structure. How much time do we have for this? About 10? 14. Okay, there is good time. So this is highly important. So I, I give you an idea of the proof. By the way, these are the PTD constructions. Uh, in the paper in the journal of IT. Proof. Let uh, pi from x times the mapping stack <coughs> f to f 
with the uh, oh, evaluation with the evaluation morphism evaluation morphism we have omega sitting in here this is our symplectic form on it and it corresponds corresponds to a morphism the morphism of graded complexes omega takes you from k to minus n sitting in the second degree to negative cyclic homology, negative cyclic complex of f. Okay. And so it's the cohomology. I mean, if you define this as a morphism from here to here, we realize that these actually sit inside cohomologies of this. So this is the this morphism in the derived category, basically. If you like. In the derived category of quasi coordinate sheaves on F, omega is given by this morphism, right? So it's similar to when you, when you have a form, let's say it's a Durham complex, and you try to take, pick from the Durham complex, you, you need to pick out some M form. What do you do? You take cohomology of this thing and then you shift it by minus M or something. So this is basically that. You put the shift on here and so you will have what you want. Okay. So okay, so you have that. Now using now using the integration. Integration along uh, orientation x. We so basically the idea is just like the one that I did for two manifolds, one with an orientation or the volume form, and one with a symplectic form. So you pull back and then you integrate. So now given with the, the this orientation. We consider composition. We consider a composition. So you take this omega, you integrate it along this orientation of x. That takes you from k, so shift it by 2 minus n, and sitting in degree 2. So negative cyclic complex of F, then via this evaluation map, this maps you to uh, negative cyclic complex of F, X times F, X times, uh, uh, sorry, X times R, mapping the space to here. I'm just pulling this back up. And then, I integrate along x, and that gives me a morphism from there to our map of uh, x to f shifted by minus t. So let's see if it is correct, n minus 2, um, yeah, that's correct. So this whole thing, the thing that survives in here, n and d, so this, this is by definition, is by definition gives you a morphism from here to here, morphism from here to here. 
okay? And it's a two form. So this gives you a two form. This by definition is a closed um, two form of degree n minus d, because it starts from two minus n, but I mean this just keeps track of cohomology, and then n minus d shifts n minus d. Full form of n minus d on R map And the two basically tells you that it's a two form. So you can just put the map, uh, if you like, you can just put the map n all the way to here, and then you can see so it's a two form of degree n minus d on mapping the space. Okay. So this is all telling you, so this is the just basically telling you that integrating the symplectic form along the orientation of x gives you something in here. Oh. So. It then remains to show that this form is non-degenerate. This that this two form is non-degenerate. In fact, more explicitly, more explicitly, the form is given by, so you can, again, this is the two form of degree n, so you can start from here. And the symplectic form gives you a map from here to Durham <laughs> complex of F. It sits, of course, inside the negative cyclic complex, but also maps to the Durham complex. And then it, it can be pulled back up. So it goes to the Durham complex of X times the mapping stack. And then it goes to the home complex of R map X N. Okay, so um, I should I should say not to show that it remains to show that this close to form close to form contains an underlying two form. Two form that is non degenerate. That's what we are doing. The underlying two form in here sits inside the, the underlying two form of this close two form is given by a morphism in the Dirac category like this. And it's the underlying two form that gives you the symplectic form there. Okay? So to show that it is non-degenerate, we should basically show that the image of this composite map here defines for you a non-degenerate two-form. So basically this is saying that you started from x, and some shifted symplectic, uh, okay, so what was it? You start from f, and you had some symplectic form omega of f, like that. Some symplectic two form, symplectic two form. So it's a closed two form. It sits inside negative cyclic complex of F, looks like that. And then 
it is non-degenerate. So this underlying zero piece there is a non-degenerate two-form that gives you a map from T of F to L dot of F shifted by N, for instance. So it gives you a quasi-isomorphism between tangent and cotangent complex. You're pulling it back up and then integrating it along X, and you get something in the negative cyclic, uh, cyclic algebra of the mapping instance. To show that it is a symplectic form, the underlying form that you get in here also should be non-degenerate. So we are just done now discussing the underlying two form, what happens in the zero piece. Okay, so that actually also explicitly can be written as image of a composite map. And so this is what we are doing. So. Okay, so this is basically that. And now, now given an uh, A dot point, so let's look at the pointwise uh, argument. So x from spec of A dot to R map xf. So this is an A dot point parameterized by this algebra, a dot point inside the mapping space corresponding to corresponding to mm, f from x time spec of a dot to f. Okay. If t dot of f denotes the tangent complex of F, okay, then the tangent complex, tangent complex of this mapping stack is given by um, T dot X, the tangent complex of this mapping stack at X, at X, is given by taking the tangent at that point. And well, what is that? That is the simply R hum from O of X times the spec of A dot to pull back of the tangent complex of F. Okay, so this is not that bad, right? Because it runs exactly with algebraic, regular algebraic geometry. You have a mapping space which parameterizes all possible maps from X and a stack to a stack, and then you perturb the map, and that gives you A dot point, those points in the mapping space, because it's a moduli stack. This actually has universal properties, so you can actually perturb it, and this thing maps, and so the tangent space given by a point defined by this map is basically just pullback of this, and R home from O to pullback of this tangent map. So that's the tangent complex at that point. Tangent complex of mapping is stack at that point. So okay, the two form now, the two form defines a non-degenerate pairing pairing of DG A dot modules from T dot of F, T dot of F to O of F shifted by N. 
this mapping, this stack F under you know, it, this had a shifted symplectic structure, shifted symplectic two form of degree n. The two form on F defines a non-degenerate pairing like that. That's by definition. So we just all we need to do is, and this is the underlying two form, by the way. This is the two form which I called omega zero of f. This is that. And the closed two form is all the other pieces. It's omega zero f that gives you a non-degenerate pairing here. So all we are trying to do is we are trying to see via this composite map of Durham algebras, what I get in here defines a non-degenerate pairing between this wedge with itself and O of the mapping of stack. That's all I need to check. I start from that, compose, and look at the image, and I want to show that this defines a non-degenerate pairing in here. Okay. Is it clear what, what the strategy is? So, a pairing which induces A pairing, pairing, C dot, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, don't call it a C dot, it's better just to R hom O of X, tensor spectrum A dot to F star of P dot A. Yeah. Wedge with R of X spec of A dot F star of P dot of F. Okay. Two R of O of X spec of A dot and O itself. O of X times spec of A dot. By N. I'm just applying to this morphism in the Dirac category. I can, this is just the evaluation, I pull it back up and I apply R hom O to it. So O will get the map like that. It induces a map like that. Then uh, okay, we can then we can then compose uh, this pairing this with orientation orientation. orientation to get a perfect um, <coughs> a dot so to get a pairing of uh, to get a pairing of perfect a dot module a dot eg modules So we get the pairing like this. So, um, so you will start from R hom O X spec of A dot F star of P F times R hom O X spec of A dot F star of P F. And this time it maps you to a dot of n minus t because I integrated along the morphism that sends me to x. So I integrated along this orientation. If it were just x, it will be a map from r hom 
OX, OX to underlying Q shifted by D. <coughs> now it is, you know, it is mapped to as a result of, uh, modified by this one. So you get your underlying algebra will be extended by tensor product as well. Okay. So that's it. This is non degenerate since omega zero F is that finishes the proof. Okay, so I, uh, it's a little bit uh, well I don't know. It feels it seems like a uh, kind of involved proof, but not really. Kind of the strategy of it is kind of obvious what we're doing. Okay. So can you give an example of our equation? Excellent. Here? Excellent. Good. We have one we are one one minute over the time, but let me write down this example. So Let's give one example before we go, and then Lagrangians, Lagrangian structures I give you next time. If you have, if the idea is that when you do, I will, I will prove for you a statement that if you have, like, now, now you can actually see, look, looking at the mapping the space, you can actually see that the shifted symplectic structure gets modified by, by the degree D. Okay, so then I will talk about fiber products of two stacks over another stacks, and then eventually talk about Lagrangians uh, and intersection of Lagrangians, which are fiber products. But example of X with properties in the theorem. Okay, so let X be a let X be a Smooth, smooth, lean mall for the stack, lean mall for the stack over k of dimension d. For instance, look at the moduli space of uh, stable sheets on a smooth projective surface. Bukai showed that it's a the lean mall for the stack of dimension, whatever you calculate from Grothen with the normal. It's a manifold. Okay. Assume that, sorry, I just write this example and we go. Assume that we are given an isomorphism, morphism of line bundles isomorphism of line bundles U I call it M the D omega one X K and O X top uh, volume form okay canonical bundle okay think about moduli space of the stable sheets on K three surface that's actually exactly the case. All right, considered as a considered as a derived stack, derived stack, mm, X is X is automatically automatically O compact. Moreover, moreover, the isomorphism, isomorphism U, together with, together with the, uh, with the trace map, trace map defines a morphism. Isomorphism uh, 
defines a morphism from defines a, a morphism from HD of X and O to HD of X and omega of X and then trace to K. which is an isomorphism. Okay. So this isomorphism defines defines a well-defined well-defined morphism morphism of complexes C of x, O x, to k, because it goes from d to k of degree minus d. Which by say, which by say or duality is an orientation on So I think this is a good example. Yeah, and in fact, if you use the if you use the moduli space of Mukai, stable cheese on a complex smooth projective surface, this orientation is exactly the orientation of the manifold that you get. Except we need to calculate the dimension. But anyways, don't calculate the dimension. All right, so this is the example. Next time I do Lagrangians, intersection of Lagrangians now, immediately after this theorem, you can see. If, you, if I give you an ambient moduli step, or any step, I give you a Lagrangian in it, another Lagrangian in it, fiber product of two Lagrangians will have a shifted symplectic structure. And this way you get a tower of shifted symplectic structures. You start from ambient plane, you take things, intersect them, shifted symplectic structure reduces and reduces and reduces, intersect more and more and more. And, and, and then we go to the modular space of coherent sheaves, the symplectic structures are there. All right, and you will be amazed to see actually some of these things, how they actually show up in honest, concrete, computational examples. Like in degeneration of Julie, when you degenerate a variety into a normal crossing, your moduli space on the generic fiber degenerates into fiber product of two moduli spaces over the special fiber. <coughs> the, the thing is that shifted symplectic structure of the generic fiber, let's say it's a Calabria moduli space, dimension zero, virtual dimension zero. This thing generically transforms, degenerates into something where the fiber product is still dimensions, virtual dimensions. But the shifted symplectic structure actually um, over the fiber product can be calculated. And each one of the pieces will be a Lagrangian inside the fiber product of the ambient, ambient fiber product. Anyway, so we can discuss those things. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next lecture is next week or a week after spring break or is the next week spring spring break? Yeah. Cool. So, okay. uh, so what, what do you guys want to do? Just tell me do it. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. No problem. Then let us not do anything. So let us let us postpone week to a week after the spring break. Because I would like to go to this conference myself. So what, what, it's just on Monday to Wednesday. Monday to Wednesday. What is the theme of the conference? The stability conditions, oh, stability especially Bridgeland. Oh, okay. Then I'm also.